Continuing our countdown, now promise number seven. If politicians take your money and use it to build fancy stadiums like this one to host big events, that'll boost the economy. That's why America fought to get the Olympics. The Olympic Games brought hundreds of thousands of tourists to China. It's a reason cities bend over backwards to get the next Olympics. We want these games. The president wanted the Olympics in his hometown so much that he and his wife personally campaigned for it. I never dreamed that the Olympic flame might one day light up lives in my neighborhood. Rio de Janeiro. But they lost. Brazil won. This cheering suggests that America missed out. After all, Olympic boosters always say. The Olympic Games, you know, have the ability singularly to transform an entire nation and a city. The job contracts and opportunity. Thousands and thousands of construction jobs. But economist J.C. Bradbury says most of that construction ends up as waste. In China, they built the Bird's Nest Stadium, which was a beautiful architectural feat. There's no need for it anymore. It sits virtually empty. People remember the big crowds. They're less likely to remember the waste. They always tell me this will be good. Oh, it's going to put us on the map. We're going to have people coming from out of town spending their money, and then we're going to take that money and spend it and spread the wealth around. Do they ever live up to their promises? Never. But politicians repeatedly claim building lavish new stadiums like this one in Miami will provide economic stimulus, unleash thousands of jobs, revitalize the economy. Build it and they will come. Always it sounds good and the prognosticators are always predicting this is going to be hundreds of millions of dollars in benefits. The only problem is when economists go back and look at what actually happened, the benefits aren't there. One reason is that stadiums are not in use most of the year. Baseball teams have only 81 home games. Basketball teams just 41. Football just 8. But they do other things in those states. Oh, yeah, you want to say maybe there are a few concerts, there are a few festivals here and there. Again, okay, let's say you're having 100 events there. Still, that's basically a third of the year you're only having it open. Yes, on game day, stadiums do provide jobs for people like ushers and stadium food vendors. Hey, beer guy! But those are just the seen benefits. The unseen cost is that those people would otherwise be spending their money elsewhere in the local communities. At the local bar, there's one less bartender. There was one less waitress hired at another restaurant. A movie theater that had one less theater full. It's handing money from your right hand to your left and declaring, I'm rich. You can't see the person who doesn't get hired. Absolutely. It's the classic scene versus the unseen. And we're always going to favor the scene. The unseen, like the grocery store, doesn't have a politician in its pocket. The grocery store isn't asking for big subsidies from government. We're taking from people we patronize every day and asking them to pay more to subsidize an already wealthy baseball team owner or football team owner. So what do you do when the team says, we're going to leave? Do what San Francisco did. When the giant said, we're going to leave if you don't build us a new stadium, the city said, we're not going to do it. The owner realized, OK, you got me. I'll build a stadium for you. They don't need government welfare to help build these things for them. Let them do it. Another event that was supposed to revitalize the city was the G20. Everybody say cheese. Leaders and bureaucrats from 20 nations come together to talk about the economy. Several years ago, when they chose to meet in Pittsburgh, the mayor was excited. They see our beautiful skyline. They see our great three rivers. Senator Bob Casey told residents the event would be an economic boon. Local businesses were told G20 would bring in thousands of visitors. Patrick, you're all set. Tim Tobich and Megan Lindsay own Frank Chuary, a hot dog shop that stayed open late for those thousands of new customers. But they never came. It was just completely dead. Nobody was here. Certainly the fewest customers we've ever had. I thought it was going to be a good thing at first, even though I'd like to think I should know better. So where were all those guests the city promised? Oh, here are some. Move out of the street. A thousand the state troopers. I hereby declare this to be an unlawful assembly. No one sees a tank and thinks, oh, I'll go downtown for lunch. Next year's G20 will be in St. Petersburg, Russia. Good luck to them.